Updating software and firmware on an IoT device over the year is complicated and tricky. Many things can go wrong. Mender IO will help you. It's an open source project. Einstein actually is here to talk to us about it. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and here today we're gonna talk about device management and over the year updates. And for that, we have Einstein from Northern Tech. Thanks for joining us, Einstein. Sure, thank you, Olivier. So can you tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, and then we'll talk about Mender IO, which is an open source project you're one of the tech leads on, and that actually allows doing fantastic things with devices. Thank you, yeah. So I'm uh, the CTO of Northern Tech, the company behind uh, Mender. Um, and uh, Mender is an over-the-air open source update manager. Okay. So I hear the idea here is to update devices over the year, but not just application. It's also about firmware, right? When we talk about securing devices, it's important that these devices are always up to date. Right. Uh, but also allows you know to bring new features and functionalities to your IoT devices. Exactly. Uh, so IoT Hub provides an infrastructure or a platform to manage devices, but it's a platform, right? So tell me a bit more about Mender IO. What does it do? How does it do that? Right. So we focus on over-the-air updates in particular, and to end, and like you say, system updates and application updates. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit similar to your smartphone uh, iOS, okay. uh, for example. Okay. We'll get updates now and then, and mm -hmm. then you also have applications run on top of uh, iOS. Okay that are also getting updated. And uh, so that's fine for a uh, mobile phone, Android, iOS, but mm -hmm. how do you bring this to an IoT device? How can you do this in a robust and secure way? Yep. Yeah, because actually, yeah, I like you bring uh, robust because you don't want a device to go off and not work anymore, and then you have to send someone to go fix it manually because it would kind of void the, the idea of doing over-the-air updates, right? Exactly. And, and on devices, there are actually millions of them in the field that's not sustainable if it's not robust. Exactly. Security is important as well. You don't want someone to actually hack your device by injecting code to make sure to whatever software runs in there and is updated is the right one. Exactly. Tell me more about you know, how you do that and how you, you, you make it robust sure. and how you make it secure. Sure. Uh, so on the robustness side, we have uh, two system partitions. Mm -hmm. So we never update the system we're running on, but we update a different system. Okay. And then whenever uh, the update is completed, uh, we just start a new system, basically. OK. Uh, so that means that even if you lose power, you can just unplug the device in the middle of the update process. Uh, it will still just boot into the system you were in. Yeah. So the device Stable. will still be yeah. operational. Yeah. And that means as well you can do rollbacks, right? If something right. goes wrong in your update, then you can you still have a working version there. Exactly. So if you do reboot into the new update, you can do some checks. Okay. Is my application working? Yep. Can I collect data still? Can I talk to Azure? If not, we can just roll back to the old partition. OK, love it. Um, you had some more slides, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I have a quick introduction about yep. uh, Mender. So this gives a little bit um, overview of what we just okay. talked about now. So you can see there's a server component okay. and a client component, and then the partition layout you can also see in, okay. in this slide. And so the server actually would be whether hosted on the cloud provider or as an enterprise you can actually run it on premise in your own infrastructure, correct? That's correct. So we have a um, man hosted Mender, which is a SaaS service where okay. you can basically just uh, um, connect your device to hosted Mender, don't have to worry about server okay. infrastructure at all. Okay. Uh, or you can host it if you have more uh, privacy or security concerns or yeah. regulation concerns. You yeah. can self -host. Or you work offline. Maybe yeah. you have on, your exactly. on-premise, you have devices in the factory, you want everything to happen down there. Exactly. Okay. Um, how does that integrate with IoT Hub and the Azure uh, you know, tools that we have for, for IoT Good management? Good point. So uh, I'll move on to the next mm -hmm. slide. Um, yeah, so these are some of the benefits with yeah. Mender. Uh, I think we covered most of these already. Um, but it's fully open source, no vendor lock-in, client-server solution. Okay, and, like it. And we focus a lot on uh, on integration because um, uh, when you're developing a new IoT product, mm -hmm. uh, important to get it to market quickly. So you don't want to spend too much time on on trying to integrate with different solutions. Yep. And how would you get over the air updates to Makes work? Makes sense. Um, so this is also part of the Azure uh, work that we've done. So. Uh, 
with Azure, you obviously need to connect your device to yes. the Azure platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need it to be securely authenticated. And now you also need over the air updates. So you need to connect it to Mender also, for example, if okay. that's what you're using. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to ma manage this multiple authentication set, multiple registrations, yeah, and you need yeah. both these services. So this is what we're trying to solve with this integration that we've done, okay. uh, that you can just use one identity and a single set of credentials to... For, for, both, for both platforms, basically. You, you end up with one solution, one identity and authentication key for the device itself right. to connect to both services, right? Exactly. Okay. And I have some, yeah, so these are some of the benefits you get yeah. out of it. So you don't need to register it in multiple mm -hmm. places. Yeah. And you can correlate also the device from Azure and Mender. So if you see some problems mm -hmm. from the analytics in Azure, you can actually look up that same device, same identity in hosted Mender. Got it. And you can deploy and yeah. update it. So Mender specializes in the over the year updates, and ITF provides all the other services exactly. right, to do analytics on that data after the fact. So basically, now you're you're connecting these two worlds, making it easy for developers to integrate the both of them. Exactly. Okay, looks good. Thank you. So I have one yeah, more another slide. diagram, right? Yeah. So there's yeah. the last diagram, and um, this uh, relates a bit to the demo that we'll go through as well. Okay. So what's the workflow that the user goes through uh, mm -hmm. using this integration? Uh, so like today, you would create a device in Azure, mm -hmm. uh, in DPS and uh, IoT Hub. Yeah. Uh, but what we've added is uh, Azure function that when you do that, you will uh, actually also create the uh, device in hosted Mender okay. using the same credentials and same identity. Got it. Uh, and then you can obviously build on top of that to, to take benefit of the, um, of the Azure platform, mm -hmm. reporting analytics, okay. and also deploying software updates. Got it. Too. Awesome. I want to see that in action. Yeah. You have to show me sure. a demo here. Let's see. So let's start out. We're starting out blank with the um, uh, Azure environment. So okay. you can see the uh, we have a DPS service and okay. uh, we have a IT hub. IoT hub here. Um, okay. That doesn't have any devices Got yet. Got it. So blank slate. Blank slate. And mm. we also have um, hosted Mender. Uh, okay which is also in the same state, Got no, it. nothing here. Uh, so that's no the devices. that's the that's what Mandarayu looks like in the hosted version, right? So you have right. your devices list in there. Yeah. Uh, what you would typically do in a workflow, like let's say no Azure involved, mm -hmm. Mandarayu, you would actually create a new device or group of devices. Yes. It would actually generate the credentials for the device then to use them in the client right. for doing the connectivity and, and software updates, right? Right. Okay. So there's a, a couple of models. So one we have is uh, where you could accept the device after the fact, so you can okay. simply connect the device and it will show up as pending here. Uh -huh. uh, but that's not, it's more for demo purposes. It's okay. not very scalable to manually approve devices. Yeah, no, I should uh, figure. So what you're alluding yeah. to is the pre-authorized, is where you would create the device in Got advance on, on manufacturing. Got it, well. so then so you have like set a certain type of device that you define in Mender, and then when you push an update, you can actually address a group of devices of a certain type right. to, to provide your updates. Got it. Exactly. Okay, so okay let's provision that, right? Yeah. So, so you we have, have a device a, here. Yeah, there's a device. So this is a BeagleBone Black device. Okay. And um, I've added the, the Azure IoT device provisioning client to it. Okay. So okay. we can actually... So what is it running right now? Is it so this is running Debian. Okay. Uh, so the standard um, BeagleBone Black okay. um, operating so system. So the Mender client actually, what does it work on today? So we support Linux. Okay. Uh, so we started out with the Yocto project, which is a build mm -hmm. system. It's okay. actually the most popular way to yep. run Linux in yep. IoT devices. Very familiar with that one. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> and then Debian, uh, we also support and, and Raspbian. And, uh, Got it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this one is ready. It yep. has a DPS client. It has a Mender client in there. Yes, that's right. And um, basically, you, you will provision it in a second, right? Pressing enter there. Yes. If okay. I typed everything correctly, it should now be Let's see how it goes. ready to be provisioned. Enter there. And then I just need uh, to authenticate it. There so there's go. a lot of output here, uh, obviously. Um, but it's what it's doing is connecting to the DPS service in Got Azure. It. And okay. uh, it's trying to uh, provision itself okay. using the certificate that we have put on it. Got it. So now it's actually completed. So we should Let's be see able what's going to on up there. see 
if it's uh, if we do a refresh, if it's available in Azure. Boom! Yep. Yes. There it is. Cool. Okay. So this is a um, standard workflow in Azure. Uh -huh. So what's new here is that um, you, if you go to pre-authorized in Hosted Mender, you will actually see the same device here. Okay. So now it's actually ready to be um, mm -hmm. uh, to be part of Hosted Mender. So got it. The Mender client is still not running on it, so I, I will have to start that uh, as well, okay. and it will become uh, got it. Provision. Okay. And so um, what you needed to do actually on Azure is to have an Azure function that's that right. is actually hooked up to DPS. Yeah. DPS triggering, hey, I have a new device, yeah. and that function actually has credentials to access your Mender I/O. Uh, hosted accounts right. and added the same device up there, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the second part is about updating the software on that device. Yes. That's Let's right. do that. Cool. So now I just need to start the uh, Mender client on the device and uh, um, it will connect to hosted Mender. So okay. obviously this is typically you would automatically start it, but for demo yeah, purposes, yeah, yeah. I did it manually here. Got it, got it. So you see your device has been actually showing up in, in there? Yeah, so now it's it. uh, fully available. You have some more inventory information. You okay. can see it's, uh, it's connecting. So we can actually start deploying software updates to it. Okay. You want to show me how you deploy that? Yes, I will. So. Uh, I have created a couple of artifacts, as we call them, okay. um, and uh, they are full system updates for the BeagleBone itself. Okay. Uh, so there's one updated system, and then this is the one that's already running there, the provisioner. Mm -hmm. So we can we can switch between them. Got um, it. So these are the output from the Octo project integration we have, or the Debian Got it. integration. So you basically, in a, in a typical scenario, you prepare your image the Yocto, yes. with Yocto. The, Im the new image with the new app or whatever updates to the firmware are ready, yep. and you basically have it on Mender, and then you're going to do, hey, I'm going to do a deployment on all these devices. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Makes sense. Exactly. So uh, I would just go to deployments, and I can deploy the updated version. Um, and uh, I can also make groups here. Yeah. So if I just wanted to deploy to one customer or to a test group or mm -hmm. something like that, I can do that okay. as well. And we do check, uh, this is also part of the robustness part, um, how the software and the hardware is compatible. So Mender knows that this is a BeagleBone, mm -hmm. and then it also knows that the software is built for a BeagleBone. Got it. So this is why it will say 101 device will be updated. Got it. Um, and then now the Mender client is running on the device, okay. and it will check if there's an update available at okay. regular intervals. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, then when it's the server tells it, yes, there's a new updated yep. uh, artifact available mm -hmm. for you, uh, it will start downloading it, it and stream it to the inactive partition. Got it. And it comes from Mender itself. So the, the image is hosted on your instance of Mender IO. Right. right? So basically, you don't go and pick it up somewhere else unknown. You have it there. Uh, do you have any uh, any way of signing the image or something to ensure that what you're downloading is actually what you want? Yes, we do. So there's obviously a TLS transport security, okay, yeah. uh, but we also have this one is not signed, but we do support code Got signing. It. Okay. So when you're as part of your development process, you're doing the QA practice, the mm -hmm. QA manager can sign this offline. Mm -hmm. Just test the image, sign it with a key has offline, okay. and upload it. The public key will be on the device to verify. Awesome. Cool. Uh, how long does it take, Ashley, for doing su such as an update this as an example? This will actually take a while, but uh, what I can do instead of waiting, oh, I can... Oh, wow. How many, how many minutes is a while for you? Maybe right now? Uh, f it depends on the network connection, but okay. uh, uh, I would say maybe like 15. But what we can do instead is to demo the, uh, yeah. the robustness aspect. Yeah, so now yeah. I just... Uh, Unplug the device Got it. while it was updating. Yeah. Uh, so, if you're not careful on the way you're doing updates, this could lead to problems, obviously. And yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, obviously. Yeah. And um, this happens all the time uh, because you have devices running on battery and yeah. uh, you have users that unplug devices and you never know. Classic. Or, yeah. Yep. Maybe you turn off your car mm. yep. or something like that. So. Yeah. 
So do you have rules you can you can set up on the device itself for retrying the download, or is it like uh, something is managed in Mender where you can actually set things up, a number of retries and things like that? Yes, we can configure this as well. So okay. um, by default, it will try retry um, I think three times. Okay. Uh, and then, but you can also create scripts or executables okay. to set conditions for when is a good time to do update. For example, yeah. uh, if uh, for a car. I don't want to update it while I'm on 3G connection on the road, mm -hmm, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But when I get home, I have Wi-Fi connection. You can make a script to, yeah. to check, OK, is it on Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah then yeah. I will proceed Got with it. update. Got it. So here we see one failed. Yes, so that was uh, unfortunate, but as expected. Um, yeah, because you unplugged it, and that's basically. Right. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> in this case, you can still see the device itself is fully operational. Yeah. Uh, it's still. You can see the log as well. This is yeah. quite detailed, uh, but you can uh, diagnose uh, what really happened here. Okay. Um, but you can still see the device is um, uh, still being it's updated. It's not messed up, right. basically. And it's Got on it. the same version that it was before we started okay. the update. OK, so safe, still working. You're going to retry the update later. Yes. All managed can. by Mender.io. Yeah. Awesome. All of that is open source. So yes. Mender.io, actually, we're going to add the links to easymender.io. Yeah. Uh, Einstein, thanks a lot for that insight into Mender.io and the integration with IoT Hub. Uh, you guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon on the uh, IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe.